everybody everybody man i got a good looking sister on the channel today oh my god she about to put it down she don't tell she it ain't just one story her she got a bunch of stories she about to share with us oh my god i don't know i, I don't know how i found her but i'm so happy she agreed to come on strong inspiration so we can enlighten you just a little bit more you know, I'm Anthony Brogdon, and I'm the guy that come up with the questions. I find these people, and, and, and this is just what I'm doing, all right? I'm keeping this Black history alive. You can't say that there ain't nobody telling you this stuff, because here it is, and it's free. All I'm asking you to do is a few things for me, please, is hit the subscribe button. That don't cost you nothing. It just let me know you're watching. I don't, and when you hit the button, you don't give no information or your background, your social security number. You don't do none of that. You just hit the button. None of that comes up, right? So you ain't got to be scared of that. Um, hit like this video. If you don't like no other video on my channel, you need to like this video. After you watch it, you're going to know why. I'm a, I promise you, she's going to put it on you. And then hit that notifications bell because uh, when the videos and all that I uh, upload and I do, uh, oh man, four or five videos a week now because I'm jamming hard, um, you get to know when the video comes on. It give you a little ding or something like that. You know, a little notification. Hey, you got a video you need to watch. And you know, I, they, they, you can watch it as you please. But if you want to be the first, you want to get that notification button. Also, I really would appreciate if you tell somebody about strong inspirations. Don't keep this to yourself. Tell somebody, share the videos, all right? Do that. Take it to them young kids, let them watch it. Get a group of them and cook some popcorn and say, I want y'all to know this. And don't wait till Black History Month. Don't do it because you got it. I mean, we got this, oh man, it might be six, seven, eight months before that happens again. So do it now, watch it now. Enlightening people, enlighten yourself, enlighten your family, your friends, that girl you trying to date, tell her, come on over the house and watch Strong Inspirations, see what happens. That guy you think you like, go on and tell him, watch Strong Inspirations. And then the other thing I really would like for you to do, and this is kind of how, not kind of how, this is how I make my living. I got this movie out, I'm a filmmaker. And it's called Business in the Black, The Rise of Black Business in America. And she gonna tell you a whole bunch of little known facts. There's a ton of them in here. On the rise, uh, how slaves went to college. I got a school in this movie that is called the Freedom, uh, Floating Freedom School, where the guy built a raft to float down the Mississippi River so the, 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 the racist man wouldn't catch him uh, teaching how to read and write. It's in my Ooh. movie. I mean, that's the only one I'm going to give you today. But it's only 75 minutes long. But it's super, super powerful. And it's called Business in the Black. And then I wrote the book. It's called Black Business Book. And the book is very, very reasonably priced. I'm going to tell you how much because I want you to go ahead and get it. And then you're going to be like, man, I should get three of those. I should get four of those. And don't wait till Christmas. Give them out to somebody, all right? It's that good. And I tell you what, it's got over 200 facts in the book. The last fact is about Motown. The first fact, we started at 1619. Mm. We cover a bunch of stuff, but I don't add no commentary. I just give you the fact, and I number the fact. So you, it, 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 some facts might be three, four sentences long, but it be, it's mind blowing. You're like, ooh, dang, I ain't know that. Then I'll tell you where I found the fact in the back of the book. And then you could do more research. But I get you started on all this good information. And I, I, I self-published it too. And so my book is, uh, it's called Black Business Book. It's available on Amazon. And, um, the movie is streaming on Amazon, so you can watch it on your laptop, your computer, your iPad, whatever, whatever, right? And uh, and then uh, it's also on my website, so you can cut the big Amazon man out if you you know so inclined. 
and uh, I, we take all the credit cards on the website and everything. And then the website is businessintheblack.net. All right. So come on now, everybody. Lend some support. Subscribe, like, do all those things. But in the mean, oh, let me tell you one other thing. And the sister, she going to like this. I use the word strong a lot, right? Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. <laughs> oneness, nobility, and grace. That's strong in my world. I, I, everything I do, I, it, it got the word strong in it. I, I'm telling you. And so check it out. I got a strong sister. She's about, go ahead, sister, introduce yourself. Tell a little bit about yourself. Let's get it on. <laughs> Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's, Let's get, get it, on. it on. You started it. You started it with power. Yes. I appreciate that. My name is Joyce Setta Pierce. I'm the director at the African American Museum of Nassau County. Now we've been doing this, my husband and I, managing the, the, the museum since 2012. When we came in, we happened to read the mission statement of the museum. And it said that we were educators in tradition and culture. So that turned us, now we were very much interested in history. I'm a certified um, genealogist. My husband is uh. a professional genealogist. So we kind of entered the history of personal family things. But then we started sharing some of the history that we had uncovered. Okay, let me stop you there. Hold on, let me stop you there because you mm -hmm. got me pick my edges. You uh -huh. were certified? Now, so, so you've been loving history a long time, 2005, right? I got my certification. Yeah, you've been loving history a long time. Yes, we, we, we founded the African Atlantic Genealogical Society. And we do family history at no cost. We just tell people on the way out, drop something in the donation box. But they walk away with as many generations as we can go back for their particular family. Okay, let me stop you there. You've mm -hmm. done your family. Yes. You got some rich stories. I know you do. Yes. And it was you know, one of the stories in your family. Well, I'll tell you about my grandma. She was the, she was a blues singer. In 1921, she recorded with Swans, uh, Black Swan Studios. Where is that at? That's in, in Lo what they call Long Island City, New York. Okay, New York. All right. Long Island. Yeah. Well, she was one of the early recorders, but the, the very first one was done in 1921. She was like 22. And um, I, she raised me because both my mother and father were in show business. So oh, they man. were on the road a lot. So they left me with her and my grandfather. And until I was five years old, and my mother had had two more children. And she said, I'm, I'm finished with show business. I have to devote my time to the family. Yeah. So she came and got me. But I was bonded to my grandparents. She yeah. was always envious of them because I looked to them as my real parents because I had bonded yeah. with them. Long story short, yeah. she married an Irishman. This white, white guy, guy from the what they call Five Corners in in New York. That's where the Irish settled in Five Corners. Yeah, there were a lot of clubs and nightclubs and things like that. And he loved black music. Yeah, much to the point where they nicknamed him the N Word Kid. Mm. And until the day he died, they called him Kid Mooney because mm. they, they, they learned that that N Word wasn't gonna go, so they yeah. had to stop using it publicly. I didn't like that either, but. When she met him, he was a, a, a boyfriend of a, another person in the show with her. So when she came out one night, she had a black patch over her eye. When he went into the back door to get his girlfriend and drive her home, he said to my grandmother, Etta, how come you had that black patch over your eye? You know, what's wrong with you? She said, well, my boyfriend and I had a fight and I got a black eye. Mm. He said, oh my God. He said, we, we know what to do for, for that. So we're talking 1918, something like that. And um, he took her to a butcher shop. In those days in New York, you, your butcher shop was downstairs and you lived upstairs over it. So he rings the bell, makes the butcher come down, sell him a steak. He puts it in the car, he, him and his girlfriend drive her back to Brooklyn to her house. He goes upstairs with her, hands her the steak and says, put this over your eye tonight. And by morning, the purple will be gone. And she said, okay. And she told me personally, by the time he got to the bottom step, I had that steak washed off and put in the frying pan and I ate it. I'm sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> came by a few times, you know, coming backstage and picking up the girl and all that kind of stuff. And then he started to say a few more words. And before you know it, yeah. he done dropped the other woman. He done picked, you know, the yeah. new girl. Yeah. So they did get married. They had nine children. 
But the thing is, as far as racism was concerned, I never knew the difference because my whole family was all different shades. So now I'm about eight years old and I'm playing with my girlfriend in the street and my mom hollers out, this is in Brooklyn in a tenement. So she hollers out the window, go down to the bus stop because your grandfather's about to get off the bus and he, you know, he's, uh, he got some stuff for us. So I walk to the corner, I bring my girlfriend with me. So now when we meet him and we walk, I'm walking next to him to take him to the house, she's walking behind me. And I wonder what's wrong with her. So when he goes into the house, she says to me, you never told me your grandfather was white. I said, white, what's that? What's wrong with him? She says, he's white. I said, uh oh. So I go upstairs. I asked my mom, ma, is grandpa white? She said, yeah, why? I said, what does that mean? She said, well, he's just a different color than we are. She said, she, I said, but you white. He said, that's because when you get children, you, you could look like your dad or you could look like your mom. And I look more like my mom. That was the only education. I was eight before I knew there was a difference. Really? In I played with everybody. We had a yeah. mixed neighborhood. I was That's in a, a good story. Now, going back even a little bit further, how, do you go back to slavery? Well, in my family, I did not. But with my husband's family, see, um, we never identified the slaves. My family had run away early. Oh, really? Um, yeah, on one side, on the Booker side, we found him in the 1750, I'm sorry, 1850 census. It was in New York, so he was free. He said he was born in Virginia, but we don't know how long, you know, yeah. did he run away while slavery was still going on in Virginia. Yeah. And then on, um, on, my, on my husband's side, he was able to trace back to the slave owner. Really? His great, 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 great grandfather, because he had children with this one woman. His family, we looked them back into the 1700s on the 1790 census, his family was there. They were not slave owners. He was the first slave owner in his family, as far as we could check. And he only got that one woman, and she was 25 when he received her. And I, we believe he, since he was a lawyer, he may have been paid by someone giving him a slave instead of money because he, we couldn't figure yeah, out any yeah, other way sure, he'd get sure, her. Sure. Well, he had uh, four boys and one daughter with, with her. Sure. And we found them on the census. And I'm gonna send you a copy of this. We also got his deed. We got his, his last will and testament. Really? Yes, he died the year that the Civil War started. And he had to list in his, when he died and, and when we read his will, he had to list all of his inventory. The, the estate had to list the inventory and they listed each one of my husband's great, great grandfathers. He, and, and one was worth like $1,200, his, $1,700. His own Hiram was his great, great, great grandfather. He was only worth $700 because he was a young boy at the time. Mm. But the, 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 the mother, the slave woman, she was blind and 60 years old and she was worth zero. Underneath her were cattle with a price, sheep with a price, dishes, porcelain, curtains, bed coverings, all had a value, but she was worth zero wow. because he didn't get any work out of her. He even had a list of how many people owed him money for the use of his slaves, his sons. But he did kind of, I mean, there was a pretty good relationship between the family because when the war actually got into it, one of the girls of his white family, his wife's children, she was in her twenties. Her sister had moved to North Carolina. This all happened in South Carolina. Okay. Her sister had married and moved to North Carolina. She took Hiram at 10 years old with her to her sister. Okay. So he would be safe. And he wound up marrying a white woman because he lived in a white neighborhood, didn't meet nobody else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we all screwed up as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. When uh -huh. you do genealogy, how do you, give us a little synopsis of how you get started. I've never well, done it. What's, what's the first okay. thing I do? And then how do I go from there to okay. start this out? First of all, I'm going to send you what we call our questionnaire. On it, it asks, what is your father's name? Where was he born? Where did he die? Um, your, his wife, who, he, who did he marry? What were his children's names? And if you don't know anything, you just leave it blank. 
What we're looking for in the information you give us is someone who was alive in 1940. Why 1940? Because that's the latest census that we have access to. In other words, I was born in 1938. So I'm on the 1940 census at two years old. So now I can go from there. I, they, now you got my birth date. Okay, hold on, let me stop you. So when okay. you, you're going on the computer to go the, to the, the census, what do you we, do there? Let me ask you. Now we had access to the census on ancestry.com. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Now the church, the church of Latter-day Saints, they believe that we all belong to a certain tribe like black people are the tribe of Dan. It's, you know, for, when we look at it, we think it's arbitrary. We don't know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't happen to yeah. believe that. Yeah. But so in order to be part of the, the, of the membership, you have to do your research. You have to tell them your genealogy and then they assign you to your tribe. If you're Irish or if you're German or if you're Asian or if you're black, you I know, got you. You, they, they assign you. So it's very important. The census data is very important. All kinds of data regarding our lives. So the men who join have to donate two years of their time. They probably get a stipend. I don't know about that, but they do research in every single archive, repository, any place in any country on earth. They will send somebody there to digitize those records, leave a copy with whomever gave them the information and bring it back to the Mormon temple. There is a mountain in which they store this stuff that is so secure that an atomic bomb will not blow it, blow their information away. They store it at I the base you. of the mountain. And now they've made it available to various places like Family Searches, their operation and, and, and Ancestry. Yeah. So there are a lot of sources. When we first started, you had to take a census uh, tape and you would go from house to house looking in there to see your family. Now you can type your family member's name in, the date of birth, the date of death, where he lived, where he was born, and boom, Ancestry will kick Let me ask you this. Now you said you saw the record that said that she was worth nothing. She was, it I'm was, gonna send it to you. You need to see this because there are probably many, many more out there, but people haven't done their research to, to dig them up because it was important to make sure they distributed their wealth if they cared about their children. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I got so you. I those got things you. are very much available in certain states. Some states did keep such wonderful records. Yeah. And actually, see, there's a census done by the United States federal government from 1790 every 10 years right. until 2020 just passed. Right, right. Now right. that information that we gave will not be available to the public until 2090. They wanted to make sure that the census wouldn't be used for collectors or somebody who wanted to harm you or oh, whatever. Oh, really? So they, and you didn't live much past 70 in, in those days. Yeah, so they sure. figured, oh, this, this, everybody will be dead by 70, so we can yeah. share their information at that point. Yeah. So that's the way it is now. Yeah. But we also have birth records and, and before uh, a, an orphan or a foster child would not have access to his original biological yeah. mother because that original birth certificate, they wouldn't share. They would give the foster parents a new birth certificate identifying yeah. them as the parents. Yeah. And just recently, they have released those records so that anyone who was an orphan or foster, they can request their biological. I information. got you. I got you. So that research is still available. And a lot of people don't know that. They think they can't go you. any further. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So you've been liking Black history. So now where is the museum at? We are located in Hempstead, New York. It's on Long Island. Which is it's how far from Manhattan? Uh, I would say 20 miles. Okay, so you write out, out that. And so um, what you do is you, in particular, your specialty is a lot of little known facts. I'm getting, that's what you told me. Exactly, that's what the museum is based on. Every exhibit we have, like they said, Meghan Markle is the first person of color in the Royal House. No, 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 no. Really? We got Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strelitz, born in Germany. Now, she's a descendant from the Portuguese. Who are the Portuguese? Africans settled on the west coast of Spain. And, oh, sorry, east coast of Spain. And they intermarried and all that kind of stuff. So there's some black blood in the Portuguese. So that's who she's descended from. She has African ancestry. And when racism raises ugly head, 
they started saying that there's a beautiful portrait of her in her coronation dress. And you can look at the picture now, you and I are going to immediately say, uh-oh, that woman ain't no white woman. Because we're going to look at her features, got that curly red hair. My mother would call her high yalla with mm -hmm. Riney red hair. Now, what Riney meant, I don't know, because my right, mother didn't right, explain right, that word. Right. But you, you get the picture. And they, would, they, they actually have stated it publicly that Charlotte is not Black, she's just ugly. Well, unfortunately for them, she had a very close friend who was both her doctor and her grandchildren's pediatrician. He left a journal. His family kept the journal year after year. It's a couple hundred years old. Well, in his journal, he also talks about his friend Charlotte and he describes her as a tr having true mulatto features. Now, what is she? What, what, what time frame is this? And who was she married to? How was she rolling? Listen to this. When we sent the Declaration of Independence in 1776 to England to say we wanted to be a free country, we sent it to her husband, George III. Oh, OK. I got it. I like it. I like it. You know they love them sisters. Hey, you know they hey, love them sisters. Hey, yeah. we got another one. Uh -huh. It's her ancestor. Just tell you how far back Blackness goes. We have another exhibit on Queen Philippa. Queen Philippa was chosen at a very young age to be Queen of England. Edward II was, was King of England and he felt that when his son became King after him, after his death, his son might be 25, 30, 40. He has a wife who suddenly becomes Queen. Now she doesn't know the protocols, how to behave, how to act, et cetera. So he thought if he got his son engaged to a young girl now, his son was only 12 at the time, he was planning ahead. He says, if I get a young lady to be engaged to my son, she could be raised to be queen. She could be educated as to all the protocols and the ceremonies, et cetera. Right. And whenever it happens, she'll be ready. So he sends the Bishop of Exeter to go and see Count William I of Holland because he has five daughters. So, the bishop looks at the five girls. He said, the, king, the king instructs him, look at the five girls and pick one to be engaged to my son. So he looks and, and he interviews all of them and he picks on one and he's, she's eight years old. Her name is Philippa and he writes to her, to the king to say what she looks like. And he talks about how her, her nose is broad and slightly flattened at the tip and her lips are full, especially the lower lip. <clears throat> yeah. And then he says, moreover, she's a brown skin all over like her father. Now let's back up a minute. William the first Count of Holland. Go ahead, give me a break now. He is brown. She's brown all over like her father. Her father is Count William the first of Holland. When you think of a person from Holland, you think white. Yeah. Who? Yeah, sure. Sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not in the 1500s. <laughs> anyway, long story short. There came a time lately when the castles and the palaces were deteriorating, they were moist, and these fabulous paintings of the royals were getting damaged, or they were in jeopardy of being damaged because of the moisture and, and bacteria, that could, uh, uh, was it mold that could grow? So they decided to pick up most of them and put them in a special museum called the Abbey Museum in London. Mm -hmm. Philippa's portrait hangs in the Abbey Museum. Yeah, I love it, I love it. But this brown girl was painted with a white face. You know what happened face. though, check it out. She probably had a little of that hip bump. <laughs> My man saw them hips and said, hey, I got that. You know that, but let me tell you how bad she, oh, I'm, I'm, tell you about I'm a hip but man, I, I'm a young the picture that we have of her, see, they were so casual. They probably said to some artists, we need you to work, go up on the so-and-so floor, the third floor, wherever she was, yeah. and look at the brown one and paint her face white, put a glove on her hand. Yeah. Would you believe that that's exactly what he did? He probably got paid and left the building and didn't nobody go up to check for him. Yeah. He found out later, he did not paint her arm and her big brown arm is in the picture visible. So that you can see that this is a brown woman who has a white glove painted on her hand and a white face painted over her brown complexion. And we have that right here at this museum. Woo, come on, keep giving it to us. And Philippa was so bad, let me tell you something. In those days, you know, the king led his army. If there were a, was a fight, a war, 
the king would lead his army into battle. She was so bad, she rode next to her husband in battle. Mm -hmm. In the evening, they would be in his tent and they would strategize together because she was such a strategic thinker that she could help him strategize what battle, how the battle would go the next day, what they would do, the maneuvers and whatnot. That's how we do. Hey, we listen, leave it to the black woman. Yeah. <laughs> Stand behind her man. All right, give me another one. <laughs> and, and let him get the credit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that's another story. Now, after we did all, and, and mind you, let me tell you something. Have you seen the show called Who Do You Think You Are? I don't know, it's here in New York, it's about genealogy. They invite people in, they do their research for them and they show them the results. And it's interesting because sometimes the person will say, oh my God, my great grandfather was a, a carpenter. I'm a carpenter too, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, when they have a celebrity, the producer generally calls the, the celebrity before they air what they found. And they say, this is what we found and do you want to share this? Because sometimes it might be personal and they don't want to show, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. So the, the guest that year was Colin Powell. And the producer called him and said, well, do you uh, know that you are descended from a great queen of England? And he says like, really? Well, who? Her name is Queen Philippa of Mexico. Uh, and, and they go on to say that how it happened, one of her descendants was on the island where he's from Jamaica. He had a plantation and he had a relationship with one of the slaves who was Colin Powell's ancestor. So that's how he got involved in her family. But he's in there with, James the first, they're all in one family because they kept marrying each other to keep the power. It is, um, when you look at the trial, see, since we did the Queen Charlotte exhibit in 2015, that's when we did the research and we created the exhibit. Since then, we found out that the blackness goes back even further. Philippa was 1400s. That's when she, you know, was born. Come on, give me a break. That goes I love back. It. We traced them all the way back to William the Conqueror and the information that we had access to, the research that we had access to, we couldn't get beyond him. We didn't know like uh, his ethnicity, but we know in 1066, there was a battle between Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales. He won the battle and he made himself king of the United Kingdom. He pulled them together to make the United Kingdom. Mm. What we have sourced is that his granddaughter, Elizabeth, she married a Kuman. A Kuman is an Asian black mix, um, you know, mulatto, Asian and African. Mm. So from that point down, they all share the African gene. Yeah, that's right. Well, basically, they have proven with the DNA that every human being has the DNA of one African woman. That's right. So we all we know that they all black. Yeah. But we just don't, in our exhibit, we just have Charlotte and Philippa. And then we have a genealogy chart, chart in the room so people can see that from 1066 all the way down to Charlotte. They end it at Charlotte. But they, Give me another one of them stories out of the museum. <laughs> okay, now, say, okay, everybody knows what Rosa Parks did. Montgomery, yeah. Alabama. She, I mean, you can go into almost any country <laughs> in the world and mention Rosa Parks' names and somebody knows who she is. Right. Well, I tried asking New Yorkers when they come to the museum, who desegregated public transportation in New York City? Duh. That's the only response. Why don't you know that 100 years of, for 1854, she did her thing, 1955, Rosa did hers. Her name is Elizabeth Jennings. She desegregated public transportation in New York when she stepped on a, 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 it was a trolley car. That's what transportation was in yeah, 1854. Sure. On tracks, pulled by horses. And at the back, there is a conductor standing there. You pay him and then you walk into the trolley and find a seat. Well, she and her girlfriend are on their way to church. So she steps on and she says, and, and immediately he tells her, wait, you have to wait for the colored car. She says, I know about the colored car, but I'm running late. I volunteer to play the organ at my church and I have to be there before the congregation comes in. He don't wanna hear it. He pushes the both of them back onto the sidewalk. They fall out. The, her friend gets scared and she walks on to church. She's a rich woman. That's why she's not in the history books because we only allow one wealthy person and that's Madam C.J. Walker. That's the only one in our history that we know about, okay? Right. So Rosa on the other hand was a very 
honest looking woman. She's a married woman. She's got an honest job. She's a seamstress. She takes the bus to work every day. Everything was beautiful about her. Right. She had a beautiful demeanor. She knew how to handle herself in that situation. That's right. So, but Elizabeth is a different person. She used to give an order. She ain't used to taking them. So she runs to the next stop and she jumps back on. Now she's in his face. And she says, this is public transportation, right? Yeah, well, I'm part of the public. I think I can ride. Well, he's going to argue with her. She has a little accent. She says, wait, wait a minute. Ho, ho. I hear this accent. How long have you been in this country? He says, 18 years. She says, my family been in this country for over 100 years, and I think I can ride. Well, they get into it again. He goes to push her off, and she punches him in his face. Well, he's upset. He calls the driver. He says, listen, don't, don't stop again until you see a police officer. I'm going to have this woman arrested. She is, she assaulted me. So they do. Now the policeman gets on. They're fighting. They're still fighting her. And they ain't winning. So they call out for the driver again. Come back here and help us. The three of them pick her up and throw her out on the street side, the gutter where the horse manure and all that other pucky is out there. Yeah. So she dusts herself off. She walks on to church. She tells the father what happened. He says, you know what? We're not going to accept this. We're going to sue. He gets a lawyer. They go to court. She wins her case. She gets a settlement. And the very next day, the Third Avenue line is desegregated. There are two other lines. Now, a Black male and a Black female then followed up. And they sued. Her case was a precedent. They won. And all three lines in the city were desegregated. Mm. She went on to be a school teacher. She turned her home on 141st Street in Manhattan, in Manhattan. She turned it into a kindergarten for black children. And her lawyer, he went on to be the 21st president of the United States, Chester Allen Arthur. Wow. That's what he did. And that was, his, that was the greatest deed he ever did because he, he lasted too long for president. <laughs> now, yeah, sure. why was she a wealthy woman? Where did this money come from? From her dad. He was born free, two free parents, in 1791. Okay. He became, he had a couple of odd jobs from, you know, different things, but he didn't do, he didn't like it too much, but he had some fabulous ideas about clothing. He became a haberdasher, a maker of men's clothing. Okay. He did successfully well. He would get annoyed because he only used the finest silks and the finest wools. So most of his clientele was white. Okay. They were, they were the only ones who could afford it really. Yeah. Sure. So long story short, they, he would get annoyed when they come in and say, you know, that blue silk you made me, uh, you got to make me another one because my wife still coffee on it. And I, you, you couldn't clean this. Water destroyed silk or, or wool. Or somebody would be caught in the rain and say, that brown wool is shrunk all up. I can't wear it anymore. Would you do it in my suit? I trashed it. Well, he was so annoyed that his established creations were thrown, being thrown into the garbage. He said, I got to do something about this. He started mixing solutions, 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 trying out different things to figure out how to clean without destroying the fabric. And he comes up with dry cleaning. He is the father, Thomas L. Jennings is the father of dry cleaning. For 100 years, his patent lasted long before he lived. They couldn't make it without coming through him. Wow. That is how she got to be so wealthy. Now, the name of our exhibit is called the Upstanders, Jennings, Jennings, and Jennings, because all three members of the Jennings family did something historic. It was her, her father, her mother was speaking out for women's rights in 1837. Love it. How about this? I got one for you. Let me see yeah. a target, and you might know this. There yeah. was a rich lady in New York. Mm -hmm. and very attractive lady. She was dating a U.S. senator or a politician. Uh -huh. Gave her a bunch of money. And mm -hmm. when she broke up with him, he sued her to get the money back <laughs> and lost. And she invested the money and owned a lot of property in New York. I got to look that one up. It's in the book, everybody. I, I, I got to get, get it. I'm definitely going to get it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know that story. Give me one more before we close out. One more. Okay. I, have you heard the theory that Africans, what, that's what Egyptians are. They always try to act like Egyptians or something else. But that's like saying a New Yorker is not an American. Right. But anyway, right. Africans, they say Africans could not have uh, created the pyramids. Right. There you go. Because uh, they didn't know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And you have to know that to make a perfect brick. See, the 90 degree angles, perfect bricks, they'll press together without mortar or cement between the bricks. Right. And that's what's so unusual. That's that's what threw blew everybody's mind. There's no there's nothing holding it together. Right. 
Well, they said they, they couldn't have been done because Pythagoras, the theory, a clear, let's be scared, see scared. Right. And, 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 you know, Archimedes with the stumps of pie and all that, they weren't born until the 500s or the 200s, you know? So they said, oh, aliens came to earth and they taught these Africans how to build a pyramid. Now they didn't tell us nothing about internet or the refrigerator yeah, or yeah. whatever. They told us how to build it. Thank you y'all. Right. But how did you get here on that rocket? Nobody asked? Nobody right. said, what kind of fuel did you use to get here? You know, right. where did you right. come from? Right. Nothing. Well, we found out that's a lie. Our, our researcher, her name is Fatima White. She found information about the Labombo bone. The Labombo bone, it's uh, what the Africans would do. They would take bones and cut them, four bones, cut them to a certain size. And there's algebra carved on the bone. Okay. They would slide the bones back and forth in order to calculate. When the Chinese observed this, they said, wonderful, but wouldn't it be nice if there was a bar and we just slid the little bees back and forward? They created the abacus based upon the Labombo bone. Well, the Labombo bone is 38,000 years old. Okay, I love it. So we had that information. We were doing algebra 38,000 years ago. I love it. When did we invent math? How far back was it? Was, is there a 100,000 year old bone out there? I got you, I got you. So we got that. And when you see these kids walking out of here, they are walking on air because I tell them, who likes math? Oh man, that's my worst subject. I, uh, da, da, da. How you, I hate it. How are you gonna hate something your ancestors invented? There you go, tell it. And you tell, you know what? In this museum, every single panel that we have, we allow people to take pictures in order so they can take it home and show it to somebody. We don't want to make, you know, beautiful if they come here, but we want you to go home with this in your hand to show everybody you know about their history because that's going to give our children self-esteem will make them proud of themselves they'll see what has been done and what they'll figure out what i can do yes. based on what has been done yeah the way they playing these games they can make up some games they can, they can develop it. games and stuff i love it keep it going them, you know hey now what's the, what's the website name of the museum the aa museum dot o-r-g and the name of the museum is what again let me tell you about the name yeah tell me about the name the name is going to be renamed That's our right. county executive is changing the name on may 17th to the joyce setter and julius pierce african-american museum of nassau county man oh man oh seven i got them <laughs> Ooh, strong my, 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 response, my response was but i'm not dead yeah that's okay that's okay this is your legacy <laughs> oh man on strong inspirations this is what we do we give it to you straight mm -hmm. and we let them tell the stories this is so beautiful that you all have come in and said hey we like what you're doing here and then take over and they take <laughs> over so well they name it in your honor <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notifications bell, tell somebody strong inspirations and, and, and go to the museum. You people up in New York, go on up there and uh, help. Y'all gonna have a big ceremony or something like that when they do yes, the night? It's on the 17th. We're having a ceremony followed by a little breakfast because yeah. it's gonna be that time in the morning. Tell them the live stream it. Stream we it too. Some li we, yeah, we, it's gonna be done virtually. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, and, and, and we're gonna have people present because now we can host 60 people. Yeah, there you so go. We, everybody we can spread go it out. And, yeah. and, and we're gonna post the, uh, the live stream Mm -hmm. uh, 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 link. So okay. You can watch it. I'll right. definitely. Right. And I'll tweet that out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's what we do on Strong Inspirations. We keeping this history alive by letting the people who know tell the stories. And so to you, my sister, and your husband standing there in the background, <laughs> tell him I said <laughs> that I want both of y'all to stay strong, mm -hmm. stay safe, stay on your grind because we love what y'all doing. We thank you so very much. And, and, and we out. Bye-bye. Thanks for telling that. Bye-bye. <laughs>